Do you know what shadism is? Have you experienced shadism? Is it alive and kicking? Has it been for your benefit or something that's worked against you? Why am I asking? Well, the Radio 1 presenter, Maya Jama, has uh, been at the centre of a storm of criticism because of an old tweet of hers. She is, by the way, seen as I am using the word storm, uh, the girlfriend of Stormzy, has been for three years now, just had a look, Stormzy has deleted his Twitter page, so he isn't on Twitter anymore. Now, there are two parts of this. One is what she has written about shadism. I'm going to read it, probably won't read it too many times or in its exact way, but I certainly will be reading it and telling, asking you, is it something you think is funny? Is it something that you would take offence to? She wrote something down when she was 16. The second part of our conversation will be about how far back you go. If I was held, to be honest with you, accountable for things that I said that I was 16, I wouldn't be on the radio. I'd be in a lot of problems, as they say in Hackney. But Maybe there are some things that you say because you actually feel and it's deeper than just saying one thing. It's about the way you were brought up, the way you feel about people. Now, there's this big thing that lighter skinned people are better. Certainly, if you went to the Caribbean, you went to Africa, the lighter skinned people would be working in the service industries. They'd be working in the banks and the like, and the darker skinned people would not. What she has written is that dark skin let's say ladies, although she uses another word, shaving their heads, expecting to look like Amber Rose, who's a model and used to be a girlfriend of Kanye West, when they really end up looking like Michael Jordan, who's a basketball player. So dark skin women shaving their heads, expecting to look like Amber Rose, when really they end up looking like Michael Jordan. She also says some interesting things about people with disabilities also. Uh, we won't go into that. Five years ago, well, when she was 16, apparently, these tweets were sent. So I'm interested in, do you find that offensive? People have gone absolutely mad on Twitter. I've been watching it through the weekend. And certainly women of colour fed up with people, uh, lighter skinned people talking about them. Are you a white person listening to this going, what are you talking about? What is shadism? Uh, you know, you're either black or you're not. What is shadism? Then we'll try through this next hour or so uh, to explain it to you. Uh, maybe you don't come from the Caribbean or Africa. Maybe you come from Asia. Maybe you come from somewhere else where how light or dark you are does play a part in how people treat you and how people respect you. And I am told by members of the team uh, that if you are mixed race or if you are really light skinned as a woman, then quids in. Bullseye. You're in. You're hot. You're a catch. Is that true? 020-722-42000. Uh, text 81333 and start your message with the word London. So, you know, as well as Amber Rudd and the Prime Minister calls for uh, Maya to lose her job. She's of Somali and Swedish descent. A uh, 23-year-old has offered her genuine and sincerest apologies, uh, but she then had to apologise for her apology, which she had directed to all women. Some tweeted, you didn't offend all women. It was dark-skinned women. So is this a fuss about nothing or is there something more pernicious going on here? Uh, join me now. Now, I, I'm going to struggle, but I'm going to have a go with your surname. Please forgive me. You, you came in literally as I was speaking, so I didn't have a chance to uh, check with you properly. Uh, Claire, uh, any um, or Sigui? Almost, yeah. Claire and Yamo Sigwe. Okay, thank you <laughs> very much. I got very nervous. I did not want to disrespect your <laughs> oh, name. Oh, no at, worries. Because I, I get the feeling we're going to have a warm time. You know? We are. So, so I'm interested. It. What's so wrong with what she tweeted? Sorry, let's let's say what you are and what you do. You're a, di a director uh, of something called No Shade. Yeah, my feature film is premiering at the British Urban Film Festival on the 5th of June. And it's a romantic drama. My birthday. Oh, special day. Special day. Yeah. Look at that. It's a romantic drama. Romantic drama centred around dating in London and the issue of colourism. So basically, well, well, how people pick their partners based on the tone of skin. Do they? 
They do, I do. Do they? They really do. What, and what, as so a, you'd be too dark for me. I wouldn't like you because you're potential, too dark. I, I, me personally, I've always been a girl that's been told that I'm pretty for a dark skinned girl. So in some to some people, I've been attractive because I don't know, maybe I'm I've got more symmetrical features. My for an e-bone fully Nigerian girl but born in London, I may not have the the biggest lips or the big broadest of noses and so for me that was always a kind of disrespectful term because I am fully African and I think this is the whole problem that we're facing where we are sort of policing what is the standard of beauty well, who, saying, yeah but it's it's one person's perception that's it it's not a general because no, we've made it into a kind of generalized sure. thing I mean and, and, sure d- 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 but when we get back to mm-hmm. to to because I'd say you're British by the way totally but, I am but, I'm but, British you know, but, Nigerian but, but, heritage yeah but, but, but here's the thing clear mm-hmm. do you understand why the earth has fallen in on her I do because she has said that dark-skinned women effectively will not look like a light-skinned woman. They will end up looking like a man. And that is deeply disrespectful because a lot of black women suffer with insecurities every single day of their lives about wearing their hair natural, wearing their hair in a weave. If I wear my hair natural, I look bush. Why is that, I look why, masculine. Why is that different to any other woman? No other woman is told that your hair is not normal. All black women are told that rhetoric that comes from social media, from the beauty industry, and I think that's why Maya has been brought to task on this, is because she is the face of a new foundation range. So the timing of this is just insane because she's fronting foundation for Maybelline, who are saying that all shades are welcome, but actually their newest spokesperson has some deep-rooted comments about Women of colour. She said it when she was 16. 17. When she was a child. Not, she could, mm, I think 17. Well, well, you're well, old enough to smoke. Well, you're not you're, old enough to vote. You're old enough to, well, you're not you're, old you're, enough, you're old enough you're to have not, sex and become someone's parent. You're not old so enough, you're, if you're to, old get enough to have a parent, without cons- to be a parent. Well, we could argue. The age, yeah, of, the age yeah. of being an adult, technically, you can't vote. You can't go into a well, pub. You can buy you cigarettes. Get, you can't get married without and you can the consent of both you, parents. But you, can have, but you can have a baby. So you, you can become someone's... You can have a baby 13. No, but you're legally allowed to have sex and become someone's parent at 16. So calling a 16, 17 year old girl that's going to college a child, she's not a child in the sense of eight years old, but she's like, you know, in, in the playground saying stuff randomly, she took to social media. You remember what you said when you were 17? Of course I do. And you stand by everything you said. I'd stand by it because I'd say 14. So double the age of seven when they say you go through that impression stage where you're mirroring everything from one to seven, from seven to 14, you're starting to form your own personal opinions about life and exploring through puberty. Then 17, so we're going, we're kind of closer to 21 than we are 14 at the age of 17. I think at that age and stage, you're starting to pick what degree you're going to do, where you're going to live, drive your car, you've got your light li- learner license plates. I think to say that she was a child and therefore we should, in that sense, discard that, oh, okay, it was just innocent. LOL at the end, the law, the laughter that she put at the end of the tweet as well insinuates that you know this is deeply disrespectful, but you don't care. And at that time, she was an unknown up and coming person so maybe for her and at that time in the the infancy of twitter it was okay to have that kind of rhetoric being spoken about and people wouldn't come at you but where we are now is in the black Lives matter era we're in the era where black women are saying you know what we've actually had enough of being disrespected and that is why my but but she is a black woman she is a woman of black heritage she is half somali half swedish but we don't know we don't know do you know know do you know that mean that means that we don't know you didn't say that about barack obama or or i didn't i didn't say that barack obama was black his mum is a white woman so what is he he's mixed race He's a mixed race president, is he not? Is his mum white? Yes. So then how can he be a fully black man with a white mother? Well, then by that definition, Ooh. anybody who came via the Caribbean wouldn't be a fully black man. If your parent is, if both parents are not black, then I, well, you tell me what, 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 what well, race yeah, but, 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 but let's, let's stay with the shadism because we mm. could, we could go in all sorts of directions. Mm-hmm. And I'm interested in the shadism that somebody Perfect. wrote something when they were 17 sure. years old sure. and 
it's somebody's gone back five years, True. six years to dig it up. Yes. At this present point. True. When she's got the job at Radio One. Sure. And, I'm, and she can't possibly think that about dark skinned people because her boyfriend is blue black. Yeah. Well, this doesn't give you my argument. Go, Storm, go for it. Storms is blue black. Sure. So, so I'm in, interested in why the apology isn't enough. Why is this thing carrying on? It has to carry on because. She, and, and and unfortunately for her, she will be made an example of because this she's not the only one this year that has done this. There was another artist called Steph London, who's a rapper, singer. She had some tweets that were kind of brought back from way back when she said them. And she got defensive. And then after two days of arguing, oh. said, look, I am sorry. Okay. And this is what it's about. It's about... Okay. No one's saying you're not going to make mistakes. No one's saying that you can't have your own opinion. I really don't mind how she feels. I can't should control she lose, her. Should she lose her job? I think it's for the... It, listen, it's for yeah, Maybelline yeah. and it's for the radio yeah, I'm not, station I'm not, I'm not, to I'm not, say... You won't give me the answer for anything else I've asked you today. So why are you giving me the answer now? Should she lose her job? Maybe. Should yeah. she lose her job? Maybe. Should... I can't make the call. It's not my call to make. Yeah, but, but, but what, what I'm trying to understand, and mm. I'm going to go into shadism. Go. I think shadism is the broader argument. It is. And it will involve more people sure. listening at home, wherever they come sure. from. Sure. Uh, but, but, but it's interesting, just to close this one down. Go for it. If you write something at 17 and you come out and you apologise and you say, that's not who I am, and you say, look, can we just... Why can't that just be that? I guess it can be that. I, for me, I'm not really interested in her losing her job. I don't want her to lose her job. Do you know what I mean? As another woman, as a woman of colour, as, as just another human being. It's not about the loss of her job okay. and I'll be like, yeah, that's so great. It's not about losing her job. What is it that it's would about put a healthy, line under this? It's about the dialogue and the acceptance of... Because what, what people... Eddie, what people are furious about on Twitter is that it's a case of... Imagine if she was a white woman that said it. We would be talking about racism. This is outrageous. This woman should lose her job. But because she is someone from the community doing it, it's like, well, you know what? She's a child and we should allow it. And that's what's the problem because that's why shadism exists and colorism exists because it's coming from within our own, it's interracial. Well, we'll talk about where that comes from. I Mm. I think it's important to read her apology, her first apology. Uh, A tweet has been brought up from 2012 where I quoted an insensitive joke that I saw a comedian say on my timeline. It was a stupid joke that I should not have made light of, especially because it's offensive to a group of women who I know constantly deal with disrespect. Gemma concluded by apologising not just to dark-skinned women, but to all women. Uh, she finished, I know this was completely wrong, whether it's a joke or not, it's not okay. What was the matter with that apology? The second po- apology, you've got no problem with it. Well, that, that, well that, that, this is the first one. This is the oh, one. is that the first this one? Is, this is the first apology where she talked about uh, not just to dark-skinned women, but to all women. I think that, Because that I think people thing. tied it in with, as I was saying earlier, this sort of thing about all lives matter. When, when we talk about Black Lives Mattering, it's the sort of sweep, the sweep over of let's sweep it under the car. Well, it, well, if Black Lives Matter, then all lives matter. That's not the case, though, because not all lives are being disrespected. Okay. Right. Not all people are dying from let, police let, brutality, right. if you want to talk about Black Lives Matter. Well, let's broaden it out. Mm-hmm. Let's broaden it out. Now, let me ask you, within your investigations to make your movie... Yes. How How is your life mm-hmm. different mm. as a, 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 a black woman of medium complexion mm. to a woman, a black woman of lighter complexion? How is your life different? Because I'm, I'm absolutely positive that there are people listening to mm. the show mm. who just go, what on earth are they talking sure, about? Sure, so wh- what is sure. it? What, what's the difference? The difference is that some people would say because if you have fairer skin you are closer to looking white so you might be deemed to be you know more professional you might have a you know on the basis of your color on the basis of your color it might be your complexion and that leads to therefore maybe your eyes are lighter maybe the coil in your hair you know this is the question they ask about this question i get asked about racism all the time yeah how do you know how do you know that your life would be different if you were lighter i have people speaking to me directly telling me that so eddie before i was a film director i'm a dermatologist i've been a dermatologist for six years working around a corner at harley street 
And I have women lying in my chair, women who are light, women who are white, women who are Asian, women who are dark skinned black saying, Claire, I'd like to bleach my skin. Why? Because I, I've been told I'd look more attractive and I'd get a man if I was lighter. I've had been on several dates, different guys telling me, I'd sleep with you, but why think you putting a ring on it? I don't think so because my mum has said that, go put a little cream in your coffee, son, where is that when you're choosing where, where is that your come, partner. Where's that come from? I feel that it's a, it's a, it's learned behavior. And I think if in my research, I've, I've kind of found that it's an offshoot of slavery. Back in the day, there was this notion that if you were fairer, you were lighter skinned, you were living in the master's house. You had the, you know, better scraps of food. You didn't sleep outside in the fields. You slept with the animals or maybe on a, you know, on a, on a mattress on the floor. The darker you were, you were picking the cotton, you were outside, you were had to do the heavy lifting, the heavy duty. So it was division for black people, black slaves, black African people who came to either but, South but, America. But, but, yeah, but, but, mm-hmm. but and now mm. they're doing it to each other. And they're continuing it on. That's it. That's literally what it's about. It's about this continuation because then from after the slavery, we had the brown paper bag theory. So again, in white America, it was a case of in the South, if you were darker than a brown paper bag, you couldn't come into certain stores. You couldn't try on a dress before you bought it. You had to just buy it because they didn't want your blackness, your dirty skin to rub off on their clothing. So it's this deep rooted... The darker you are, the dirtier you are, the more poorer you are. That's what the Asian caste system is about. It's not just in the black community. Well, that's why I've opened it up, sure, hoping that sure. we will have a conversation about sure. shadism. Totally. Uh, uh, this uh, from Sadine. I know why I never got a good vibe from Stormzy's girlfriend. Her views are uh, partly the fault of old-fashioned and outdated black men mm-hmm. uh, who put light-skinned women on a pedestal. Uh did you find that in your investigation? I did. And that's the premise of my story. It's based on two best friends, a dark skinned <laughs> skin woman and a black guy. Oh dear. Yeah. She they 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 clearly have a lot of love for each other, but he places beauty, he pl- places relevance on those with lighter skin. And he ignores all the things about this woman that truly loves him. And in the end, we'll see how it gets resolved. Uh, Can't give away the story. No, no, I I didn't want you to give you everything. (laughs) And let's bring Simone in. Simone, good afternoon to you. Thank you so much uh, for talking to us this afternoon. Uh, You you are talking to us, Simone Braziando, founder of Global Empowerment Network for Women and Girls of Colour. In terms of shadism, is it alive and kicking? Mm. Oh, yes, it never died. And it doesn't look like it is going to die within this generation or Maya Jammer's generation. We we have, you know, I want to speak directly to the young girls and um, women who don't have the language to protect themselves from this ongoing assault of anti-black messages, images and portrayals that is fed to them everywhere. So this is where you can walk out into the street and someone can scream something to you about your blackness where sometimes in your intimate moment, a partner, a remark can be said to you about your blackness. It is everywhere. It's an intracommunal, it's an intracommunity issue, um, and it's not being addressed. And those that are victims of it are constantly being silenced. They're being labelled as angry, as bitter, when it's a very real um, contributor do, to the does, hostile environment that dark skinned women have to live in. Do, does it, does it uh, apply to dark-skinned men? Yes, it does. And actually, I think what we have to also think about here is how we call it intersectionality, right? Women's bodies are weaponized. They're weaponized by their look. And the more you look like a white person, the higher value you have. And we see this in terms of our, let's look at the content that we're fed, music videos, um, love interests in films and things like that, if they have black characters. They very rarely are dark-skinned women. No, I don't know. The, the object like of my fancy quite often mm. was somebody like Naomi Campbell. She isn't a light-skinned woman. No, she isn't. But then we also have to see that how many Naomi Campbells are there compared to maybe Tyra Banks and Ch- Chanel Iman and all the yeah, other. Yeah, but then, now, now, now you're you're, you're, you're applying a kind of skin. you're applying a, a, a subjective kind of valuation of color. No, not at all. What I'm applying is real fact. 
I mean, I'm living this experience. So as much as you can say it's subjective, this is lived experience. And it's also echoed by many black women, light skin and dark skin, who are, suffer from colorism from both ends, who say this is a thing. So we have to value what women say. We can't just dismiss it because from our point of view, I like Naomi Campbell, so therefore it doesn't work. No, 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 Campbell, no, no, um, no, no, hold on, I mean, hold on. I don't know if you know the way the way this thing works, Simone. I'm not dismissing mm-hmm. anything. I am. I am putting a counterpoint of view in order that when you leave, we have a conversation about it. It's not about agreeing or disagree mm-hmm. or belittling you. That is not my intention at all, OK? So what, what mm-hmm. I'm asking yeah, you is about whether mm-hmm. whether the same applies to Idris Elba. Elba. He's a dark-skinned fellow. Whether the same applies to Stormzy. And also, yeah. when you're answering that, mm-hmm. to tell me... Mm-hmm. Whether it's, you know, just talking to Cleo saying that it's learned language, is it applied now, here today in the 21st mm-hmm. century, as much yeah. by black people, other black people, as it is by uh, uh, other uh, other people, white people? Yes. Yes, it is. It's coming from all sides. Yeah. So, yes, to your first point, do Stormzy and Idris Elba suffer from colorism? Yes. Sometimes with black men, it turns out to be fetishization, okay? So you'll see comments about people liking their chocolate skin and liking a dark man and things like that. And it's the same thing because, really, we shouldn't find value in people's skin tones. We should find value in their character. I mean, skin tone, whether you're dark skin or light skin, I don't see how it adds to me being more attractive. But we have a whole system that maintains that kind of thought process. Hence why we have the tweets on Maya Jammer. Well, right? you, you, also, <laughs> you also, don't you have not just black people wanting to get lighter, but white people wanting mm-hmm. to get darker. So m- maybe mm-hmm. shadism and colorism is more nuanced than you're presenting. No, I don't think it is. I think when we look at white people wanting to tan their skin, I don't think they have 500 odd years of like um, systemic degradation, mental degradation of them feeling like they're less than and being constantly compared to something that's better than that's not themselves. There's different motivations for people doing things. But am I going to deny that white supremacy doesn't have anything to do with with black people feeling good about themselves? I I can't deny that. And and it's it's a little, for me, it's a little bit pedestrian if we even focus on that. There are so many good things we can actually talk about in this moment that we have somebody who is, um, you know, a brand ambassador for these big brands in the, in the, in terms of showing diversity, but has no real understanding. Okay. So, so, so I've made the point several times that she was seventeen. So let me ask you the final question uh, before sadly we have to to lose you, Simone. What should happen to Maya now? Mm-hmm. I think that according to the people that employ and pay her wages, they have anti-discriminatory discriminatory policies, and so they have to apply them. I don't think any um, member. Yeah, what, of what does that mean in English? Should should. That means that if you have an anti-discriminatory policy which says that your member of staff that you're paying, whether it's a contractor or a member of employee, is paying that shouldn't go round making racist or derogatory comments about people's race, gender, class, then that action needs to be taken. What, no what, what, be, what, what is um, that? Are you saying that she should lose her job? I'm saying that the people who pay her should um, ex- should okay. execute anti-discriminatory policy. OK, thanks very much, Simone. I appreciate it. Simone Brazy, uh, I know they're talking to us. Clear, just bear with me. Uh, we're going to go into a road, I can see it, of shade, which is what we want, and it should be impassioned conversation, but I will allow you to have your Absolutely. final uh, word. We're taking your calls. I mean, maybe this is a whole new thing to you. Maybe you've never heard so much nonsense in your whole life. Or maybe you say, fantastic, at last there is an... On- Honest conversation going on about how I feel, what affects me, what affects my children. It is better here in England to be light-skinned. You will get further. Let's discuss. <laughs> 0207 double two four two thousand. Let's find out what's happening in the news headlines, shall we? At Red for us this afternoon by Will Schindler. 